Hello everyone, welcome to Storytime with Fairfield County Library. My name is Messina and I am so excited to do Storytime today. Are you guys ready? All right, awesome. This week our theme is dogs. So this week we are going to be reading two books that are all about dogs. All right, our first book is Rescue and Jessica, A Life-Changing Friendship by Jessica Kensky and Patrick Downs, illustrated by Scott Magoon and published by Candlewick Press. On a special farm in the countryside, a pup named Rescue was in training. He was learning to help people who could not see, but he was worried. His trainer had just said, you aren't meant to be a seeing eye dog. That was hard for Rescue to hear. Helping people who can't see was the family business. The service dog team is better for you, his trainer said. Service dogs work beside their partners instead of in front of them. But will I be a good service dog? Rescue wondered. What will my new partner be like? Will she like me? Rescue didn't want to let anyone down. In a hospital in the city, a girl named Jessica was worried. Both her legs were badly hurt. Everyone hoped her right leg would heal, but the doctors had to remove part of her left leg so she could be healthy again. You're an amputee now, Jessica, the doctor explained. You have to wear a prosthetic leg or use a wheelchair for the rest of your life. That was hard to hear. She'd only ever walked on her own two legs. How will I do things on my own? Jessica wondered. When will I be able to walk again? What will my life be like? Her whole family was worried about her, and she didn't want to let anyone down. Good boy. Back in the country, Rescue was learning how to be a service dog. When he wore his blue cape, that meant he was in training. He had to stay by his partner's side. He fetched all kinds of things. He even learned how to open doors. Rescue, you're a natural, said his trainer. At the hospital, Jessica was learning new ways to do things that used to come easily. She used a wheelchair to get around. She practiced getting out of bed differently. She put on a prosthetic leg so she could stand. She was learning how to walk again, even though her right leg was still hurt. Jessica grew becoming strong, said her doctors. Rescue was proud of all he had accomplished, but he was still worried. He was named in honor of a brave firefighter. He had big shoes to fill. Rescue wanted to help people just like his namesake. Jessica knew she had made a lot of progress, but she was frustrated and sad about all the things she still couldn't do. She wondered if she would ever be happy again. She felt like the changes were too big, too much. One day, a visitor came to say Jessica, and she brought her service dog, Kurihi. Jessica saw how smart dog like Kurihi could help her. That very day, she started filling out the application to ask for a dog of her own. After a while, Jessica got some very exciting news. Rescue got exciting news too. He also got a new red cape. Finally, the big day arrived. It's nice to meet you, Rescue, said Jessica. She looks so nice and pretty, Rescue thought. Rescue stood up very tall. He hoped she didn't notice her legs were trembling, but his wagging tail gave him away. 
Jessica smiled a big smile and laughed a big laugh for the first time in a long time. Jessica and Rescue stayed in the country for a few weeks, and Rescue showed her all the things he could do. You're amazing, Jessica told Rescue. You think I'm amazing, Rescue thought. I think you're amazing. Back in the city, Rescue and Jessica got used to working together. Rescue brought her the things she needed. He opened things that were hard for her to reach. Rescue barked if Jessica needed someone. If she tripped, he would hold steady so she could get back up. Rescue and Jessica were always together, but when she didn't need his help, Rescue really liked to sleep. Jessica knew that even though Rescue was special, he was a regular dog too. She made sure that Rescue had playtime every day. But Jessica still wasn't completely healthy. One day, her doctor told her that she, her right leg would have to be removed too. She would need to wear two prosthetic legs. This didn't get any easier for Jessica to hear. The night after the doctor removed her right leg, Rescue knew just what to do to help Jessica all on his own. Rescue and Jessica had to start all over again. Slowly but surely, they learned how to do all the things they needed to do together. They did chores together, played together, and snuggled together. For the first time in a long time, Jessica felt happy, and that made Rescue happy too. You changed my life, Rescue, she said. I couldn't have done this without you. I'm so proud of us, he thought. You rescued me, Rescue, said Jessica. But the truth was, they had rescued each other. So that was Rescue and Jessica. I hope you guys liked it. Okay, our second book is Officer Buckle and Gloria, written and illustrated by Peggy Brathman and published by G.P. Putnam and Sons. Officer Buckle knew more safety tips than anyone else in Napville. Every time he thought of a new one, he thumbtacked it to his bulletin board. Safety tip number 77, never stand on a swivel chair. Officer Buckle shared his safety tips with the students of Napville School. Nobody ever listened. Sometimes there was snoring. Afterwards, it was business as usual. Mrs. Topple, the principal, took down the welcome banner. Never stand on a swivel chair, said Officer Buckle, but Mrs. Topple didn't hear him. Then one day, Napville Police Department bought a police dog named Gloria. When it was time for Officer Buckle to give the safety speech at the school, Gloria went along. Children, this is Gloria, announced Officer Buckle. Gloria obeys my commands. Gloria, sit. And Gloria sat. Officer Buckle gave safety tip number one. Keep your shoelaces tied. The children sat up and stared. 
Officer Buckle checked to see if Gloria was sitting at attention. She was. Safety tip number two, says Officer Buckle. Always wipe up spills before someone slips and falls. The children's eyes popped. Officer Buckle checked on Gloria again. Good dog, he said. Officer Buckle thought of a safety tip he had discovered that morning. Never leave a thumbtack where you might sit on it. The audience roared. Officer Buckle grinned. He said the rest of the tips with plenty of expression. The children clapped their hands and cheered. Some of them laughed until they cried. Officer Buckle was surprised. He had never noticed how funny safety tips could be. After this safety speech, there wasn't a single accident. The next day, an enormous envelope arrived at the police station. It was stuffed with thank you letters from the students at Napville School. Each letter had a drawing of Gloria on it. Officer Buckle thought the dragon showed a lot of imagination. His favorite letter was written on a star-shaped piece of paper. It said, You and Gloria make a good team. Your friend, Claire. P.S. I always wear a crash helmet. Safety tip number seven. Officer Buckle was thumbtacking Claire's letter to his bulletin board when the phone started ringing. Grade schools, high schools, and daycare centers were calling about the safety speech. Officer Buckle, they said, our students want to hear your safety tips. And please bring along that police dog. Officer Buckle told his safety tips to 313 schools. Everywhere he and Gloria went, children sat up and listened. After every speech, Officer Buckle took Gloria out for ice cream. Officer Buckle loved having a buddy. Then, one day, a television news team videotaped Officer Buckle in the State College Auditorium. When he finished safety tip number 99, do not go swimming during electrical storms, the students jumped to their feet and applauded. Bravo, bravo, they cheered. Officer Buckle bowed again and again. That night, Officer Buckle watched himself on the 10 o'clock news. The next day, the principal of Napville School telephoned the police station. Good morning, Officer Buckle. It's time for our safety speech. Officer Buckle frowned. I'm not giving any more speeches. Nobody looks at me anyway. Oh, said Mrs. Topple. Well, how about Gloria? Could she come? Someone else from the police station gave Gloria a ride to the school. Gloria sat on stage looking lonely. Then she fell asleep. So did the audience. After Gloria left, Napville School had its biggest accident It started with a puddle of banana pudding. Splat! Splatter! Sploosh! Everyone slid smack into Mrs. Topple, who screamed and let go of her hammer.
The next morning, a pile of letters arrived at the police station. Every letter had a drawing of the accident. Officer Buckle was shocked. At the bottom of the pile was a note written on a paper star. Officer Buckle smiled. The note said, Gloria missed you yesterday. Your friend, Claire. P.S. Don't worry, I was wearing my helmet. Safety tip number seven. Gloria gave Officer Buckle a big kiss on the nose. Officer Buckle gave Gloria a nice pat on the head. Then Officer Buckle thought his best safety tip yet. Safety tip number 101, always stick with your buddy. Okay, that was Officer Buckle and Gloria. All right, everyone, thank you for coming to story time. Now, just because we're done reading does not mean we have to be done with story time. If you come down to the library this week, you can pick up a story time kit, which are these fun-filled activity kits that we made to go with the books we read today. Each kit comes with a coloring sheet, a craft, and a tasty recipe that you can make with your grown-ups. This week, our craft is doggy marionette puppets, and our recipe is for a dog bone party treat. To get a kit, you need to come to the Fairfield County Library and look in the children's section. They should be in one of two crates that we have in there. Now, don't forget, each of our story times has a different kit, so you wanna be sure to grab a kit from group B crate if you wanna get the one that has the things I talked about today. New kits come out every week and we have them as long as supplies last. So if you want to get a kit from last week, it never hurts to ask a librarian if there's any left. Maybe ask for Miss Nina. All right, everyone. Thank you for coming to story time. I hope to see you in the library this week to pick up a story time kit. It's time to say goodbye, but I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye.